but I think it would feel a lot better if we heard a subtle jump sound effect and a landing sound effect. So this is kind of the feel of our jump and a platformer, we're going to be jumping a lot and we want that to feel really nice without getting too repetitive. So I want to show you how you can start to add little sound cues to your level to make it feel a little bit better as we build onwards. So I'm going to escape. So since we can't all be sound designers, I want to show you a website that is very good for some prototype sound effects. Type in Chiptone. Go here, uh, Chiptone. I think the first link will probably redirect you. Basically, click on the link as it lets you go. And you're going to open up a in-browser sequencer like this, where you can actually create your own sound effects if you click for prototyping, like jump, coins, app, whatever. Most of these will be pretty weird because you're going to click them and they're going to give you a randomized one. So you probably want to customize it some. Um, I'm going to tell you for the jump effects, make, make them real subtle, right? So you can affect some of the stuff like harmony. Yeah, I probably don't want those, but um, and you can click around until you get something you like. Uh, I think for me, subtle, I really want something closer to a blip and noise. Right, and then you can click on noise. Sounds more like damage, right? Keep clicking around until you find something you like. All right, be, be aware of these extra ones that you can add to. Find a very subtle sound effect that you can use for jumping and for landing. Uh, think of like a little dust cloud. So that, that's kind of the vibe you want, like a little footstep. And once you get a sound effect that you like, you can click save wave and you can choose to save it out somewhere and you can rename it or whatever. We're going to take these wave files and we're going to import them into Unreal and set them up. So this is what I came up with. Uh, I have a jump and a land. So my jump sounds like this. Right. It's very subtle and not very loud. And that's intended. My land is going to sound like this. So if you want to try to recreate that, you can. But this is what I'm going to use. Uh, take your sounds, keep them open wherever you save them out. And we're going to hop back into Unreal, but this is a really useful website. Anytime you need some kind of audio feedback, remember, it's just placeholder, right? Try to make it not too obnoxious, but still recognizable as placeholder so that the sound designers can go and polish it up and replace it with awesome sounds later. So we're going to close this out, go back into Unreal. I'm going to make a subfolder inside of SS Game, right click new folder. I'm going to call this audio. And I'm just going to drag and drop my, my audio over here. So I'm going to keep this on my second monitor. But if you drag and drop, jump and land into your content browser, it'll bring it in. I'm going to go ahead and save these outright. We can preview them. What I want to do, though, is I want to add some variation in both the pitch and the volume to these sounds. I don't want them to sound perfectly the same each time. I want them to sound like slightly different since again, we're going to be jumping and landing a lot to set this up. We're going to create something called a sound cue to do that. I'm going to click on a sound. So in our jump right click and say, create sound cue. And this is going to create a sound cue out of our jump and you, you can just hit enter. That's fine. I'm going to do the same thing with my player land, right? Click create sound cue off. And you know, honestly, now that I'm looking at it, I'm going to rename these character land and character land queue. So uh, right click rename character land and character land underscore queue. As long as you're consistent with your naming, it's fine. Save all again. Now the difference between a sound and a queue is that a queue has additional information inside of it. So let me double click to open up my character land queue. And you can see that the, there's this weird graph system here, similar to blueprints where you can hold right, right mouse button to move around. But what this allows us to do is this is our starting point. This is our wave file that is playing. And then we can do things to it until it gets to the output. This is the end point. So the start, this is the end. So one thing that I might want to do is I might want to add variation to how my wave file plays. Pretty commonly, I'm going to go over here and do my modulator, drag that in and hook up my node into my modulator and out into my output. So I'm affecting the sound in this node before it reaches the output. My modulator is going to have a minimum and a max, and it's going to choose a random value between my pitch. So low pitch is going to be slightly deeper 
high pitch is going to be slightly higher. Uh, same thing with my volume. It'll play quieter or slightly louder. 0.95 to 1.05. It's not going to be super noticeable, uh, but it's going to be noticeable enough that it won't sound repeated inside of our brain. I can preview this by clicking play Q. Right, barely noticeable, but there is some subtle variation there. And if we wanted more variation, we could always uh, affect the minimum and maximum of the randomized values between pitch and volume. But I think that's pretty good for now. Hit save, make sure this is all connected. Preview sounds good. We're gonna do the same thing for our jump cue. Right, double click, pull this out, drag in a modulator. Plug that in, plug that in. All right, click on our modulator. Uh, I, I think that's gonna be fine. We'll just save it, close that out. Okay, so we have our sounds imported and playing with variation. Now it's time to actually get them to play on our character appropriately. To do that, let's go into our character in our SS game, open up SS character. And over here, we need to find where we are playing the jump so that we can play the jump sound. So down here inside of input action jump, you can either create this and you know call this how it is, uh, but this is already set up for us inside the third person character. So that's awesome and exactly what we need. So all we need to do is when we press the jump input, we'll do the normal jump stuff and then pull off of that. And we're going to play a jump sound effect. Now in blueprints, the node that we want, because we want the jump sound to just play the same volume for the player, because it's a single player game. We just want them to hear a jump sound. We don't really want to put it in space or whatever. You know, we, we could get fancier with that later on if we want, but let's keep it real simple. We're going to play it in 2D, meaning that it's not going to have any spatial variation. It'll sound the exact same. Just trigger the sound effect and play it. And we have a special blueprint node for that. So if we drag off, if we type in play, I think it's 2D and you'll see play sound 2D, click that. And what this allows us to do is to choose an asset inside of our content browser, right? Like these ones that we made inside of our audio folder. I double click over here. We want to choose the cue. We want to choose the cue that we set up and then just play it with 2D. So we need to choose the asset that we want. We want our jump cue that we made. Our jump sound would be exactly what our sound effect is, but our jump cue will have the variation that we specified inside of that little uh, editor that we set up. So jump cue, and that's actually all we need. We can copy this, play it. You know, if we wanted our input touch, just why not just copy this down here for jump. Now our landing is going to be slightly different for our landing. We don't have something to hook into. One thing that we get access to because we're working with a character blueprint rather than just a generic pawn is an event called on land. So if we right click and we type in landed, this event will get called anytime the character lands on the ground. Okay. So if we pull off of this event on landed node inside of the blueprints here. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to, let's actually copy this play sound 2D, drag it over just like that. And we want to play in this case, our character land queue, right? We can type it in if we want, but mine just popped up there. Character land queue, we'll play it. So as soon as the character lands on the floor, play the queue. Again, I cannot stress this enough. Make sure these cues are subtle, right? And non-intrusive. They're not loud bangs or heavy footsteps or whatever. Just keep it real subtle, barely noticeable, but noticeable enough to communicate to the player that they landed. So I'm going to compile, save, and with our play sound 2D, uh, we imported our own sounds. We're playing them appropriately. Let's test it out. Hit play. And you should be able to hear those, right? Our jump, and then our land. And we can test that out. But this feels a lot better, right? We can further expand on this with, you know, other visual feedback and whatnot. Um, for now, I think just having a jump and a land is fine uh, with just a sound effect. And I think makes it feel quite a bit better. But I wanted to show you how you could start to pull in some sound effects, how to create your own, at least for prototyping and start to trigger them inside of your game. So in the future, whenever I create a mechanic or I say, let's add some audio feedback to it, this is the process. We're just creating a sound effect somewhere. However you want to do that. I showed you a prototype 
website, import it, set up a sound cue if you want some variation, which I usually recommend, and then trigger it appropriately. This is all we're doing, so this should be easier in the future.